something called nasal irrigation. What does that mean to you? We're going to tell you because it could cut down on disease, on sickness, on the need for medications. But I won't tell you anymore. We'll welcome our guest to the program and let her tell you all about it. Dr. Hannah Solomon, MD, is joining us today. And not only has she patented something called Nasopure, but she also, she's a holistic, you take a holistic approach to your medicine. Absolutely. Patient and empowerment. Patient empowerment. Look at the patient, the whole person, and see what that's all about. But why the special interest in the nose and making sure that the nose is adequately clean? First, let me thank you. Thank for having me here today. Um, I'm a pediatrician, and um, as you know, that uh, most pediatricians will see many nasal woes. And um, I was not interested in just handing out medications. During my medical training, I was blessed to work with a pediatric ears, nose, and throat specialist who studied nasal washing, nasal irrigation, also known la nasal he taught me the importance of it, and I began using it in my practice. And what I found, very exciting, the patients who actually washed their nose came to see me less often. I started looking at the research available, and it is clear, without a doubt, nasal irrigation will remove 80% of the inflammatory mediators in the nose. Nasal irrigation will shrink swollen membranes. It will improve the filtering mechanism 80 percent and it will thin thick sticky secretions allowing your body to heal and um, as your previous guest mentioned the nose is part of the respiratory system it is the protector of we the lungs. We don't realize that though do we but I mean it really is a critical piece to your system yes. It is a it is a protector of the lungs and in that regard we know with 100% certainty when your nose works, you're able to smell. And because you're able to appreciate the odors, you can appreciate taste and flavors. It affects your mood. It affects your ability to breathe. And in that uh, vein, it also decreases. If you're breathing through your nose, you do not need as much asthma medication. And I, my focus is decreasing medication whenever possible. And if you need medication, great. We'll write you a prescription if you need it. But I think it's my job to make sure I do no harm. All doctors take an oath. First, do no harm. And um, I think nasal irrigation makes sense. The reason I came up with NasoPure, my little bottle, um, patented design, is because I was trying to make a, a system that was more convenient. So more of my patients would follow that recommendation and um, so that's how nasal well, cure was well, born. And let's talk a little more about that because this is an ancient, you know, the nose ancient, I, I guess what I'm getting at is nasal irrigation has been going on for centuries, really. Centuries and centuries by Buddhist monks. Um, most of the world actually is very familiar with nasal irrigation. It is only Western Europe and the United States that's a little bit behind the times, but we're catching up. And now, they, why is that, do you suppose? Um, well, that may be a whole nother show, but mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, focus on medications, and um, only recently is there a meeting of the minds between Western medicine and, so to speak, Eastern Chinese acupuncture, naturopathic, holistic complementary and alternative, all these catchwords that kind of have a stigma that are attached to them. Some people have a negative way of thinking about those things. You are right, but um, recently I was at an Academy of Allergy uh, Asthma and Immunology conference and they had a discussion which I covered for WebMD on complementary and alternative approaches, what works, what doesn't. I think that is a result, Barbara, of patient demanding more knowledge, the internet having access, giving them access, and them saying, what, what else can we use? You can't just keep giving me these medications. Um, well, and, and one would think that it, it would disguise, <coughs> or you know, you couldn't get in there and see what was really at issue because it might disguise that, or oh, continue you're so right. use. Yes? You're, you, you're, you're right on. Um, many of the medications, for example, let's take allergic rhinitis. I'm exposed to pollen, um, I'm allergic to pollen, and then I immediately have, have a, um, a, a swelling of my nasal membranes. I feel this dry swelling, can't breathe, maybe start coughing, make more mucus. 
you go to the doctor because of sore throat, cough, headache, I don't feel well, whatever the complaint, and they will also often give you either a pill, like an antihistamine, or they may give you a nasal spray, like a nasal steroid, or they may give you a decongestant, all of which may have side effects, all of which are a blessing if you need it. I would propose to you that you first wash out the irritant. You may not need any of those. First, shrink the membranes with a little salt water. You may not need any of those. Um, first, if you use a hypertonic, salty, and we could get into that in a minute, uh, solution, it will shrink it. You won't need the decongestant. And maybe the most important thing is if you clean the membranes, remove the mucus, and then use your nasal steroid, it's going directly to the area that's needed. All of us parents know you, you would never put an antibiotic ointment on top of a muddy cut. It really is a perfect analogy. And that's exactly. You can visualize that. So we were talking about, you know, nasal irrigation has been going on for centuries. And it's only uh, the neti pot has been around for a long time, which looks a bit like an Aladdin lamp. And yes. you fill it with salt water. Right? Absolutely. A solution. And it was, that was a difficult um, item for me to sell to my patients, especially little ones. Um, it, well, because you have to tilt your head to get it up in there, yes? Exactly. Yeah. And um, the tip can often scratch the nasal lining. And if anybody's ever scratched, you know how painful that could be. The other thing is give you a complete seal with the nostril. And I'm not going to do that here. Um, but if you put it into the nose and make a complete seal, that does two very important things. It allows a fairly good force of flush along the nasal floor and when you have that occurring, according to Bernoulli's principle, and you'll have to trust me on this as a physics <laughs> principle, it causes a suction from the sinuses or a plunging. I like to say this flushes and it plunges. It makes a U-turn and all the garbage comes out the other side. Um, the neti pot doesn't offer that. It also encourages, the, one of the dirtiest parts of our body is in the anterior nasal area. And when you're tipping with the neti pot, you actually introduce the irritants into the sinus cavity. Ah. And I don't think that's a very smart thing to do. I think only ears, nose, and throat surgeons should go into that closed cavity. I think it is our job to keep it clean, opening, clean, keep the opening uh, open and able to drain. And so you say more and more uh, Westerners are accepting this, you know, and thinking and realizing nasal irrigation is important. Let me prove that to you. Five years ago, I Googled nasal irrigation. I got mm, less than 100,000 responses, hits, er, what, however you want to call it. Um, about a month ago, I Googled again before I was a uh, talk I was giving. Many, many millions of responses. And that is from consumers uh, becoming more aware, demanding more alternatives, and really being mindful uh, that medication has its place. We haven't even touched on the subject of bacterial resistance. Which you're going to tell me about right now. Um, bacterial resistance is really a development of doctors prescribing antibiotics when it's not needed. And uh, I'm sure you've heard about uh, bacterial resistance that used to be just in hospitals, and that is spreading into the communities. It's like the economic term, the law of diminishing marginal return, where it no longer has an effect exactly. on the person. Yes. yes. And um, that is a very serious threat to our society. Um, how can we avoid that? Well, w number one, two, three is do not use an antibiotic for a cold. Do not ask your doctor for an antibiotic for any viral illness. A virus is not responsive to an antibiotic, but too often we give an antibiotic, which kills all of our normal germs. And, and there are wonderful germs that help us stay in balance. So really important. And we're quickly running out of time. So nasal irrigation, although, you know, it's kind of just yucky to talk about. Sure it is. But more and more doctors, researchers, medical professionals are realizing the importance of being able to breathe. Think about all the junk that goes up in that nose. Well, it may not be sexy, but is it sexy to have a stuffy, snotty, yucky nose?